Hey, welcome back to True Moto Resto. And on this video, uh, we're going to see if we can finish the GSXR 750 Skull Bandit. I know I've said that before, but uh, today we're getting, hopefully, get real close. So let's see how it goes. Stay tuned. <laughs> The, uh, the new throttle cable it's installed so we're good to go so I'll get these uh, get these carbs on I just put this towel on here just so I don't um, damage any paintwork on the engine when I'm uh, installing this Made a bit of free play here. That's uh, everything's working, but there's not enough uh, throttle free play there, so I'll sort that out. So we're just going to use a little bit of uh, Race Tech rubber grease. So we're just going to do some uh, warming of these boots to make it a little bit easier to get these carbs on. Thanks to the uh, gentleman on the, uh, the GSXR forum, uh, these are some of the only pod filters that appear to fit quite well with a B12 engine in a, in a uh, GSXR frame. Uh, they don't foul; uh, they fit perfectly over the uh, over the carbs. And uh, these came uh, from Amazon. I'm sure they're made uh, offshore, but probably uh, from China. So there we go. Carbs are on. Give me a shot of these uh, pod filters in here. This, of course, is the uh, crankcase uh, vent filter because there's no air box anymore, so I put that on. But you can see the clearance there. Yeah, everything fits quite nicely. Not too bad. So I guess now we've got to chuck a battery on it and uh, see what happens. All right, so we're almost ready for the moment of truth. I just got a temporary battery hooked up because I don't have one that fits in here properly. So first thing is we're going to do is we're going to see if the lights come on on the dash, which they do. Good start. Headlights on. And then uh, I think I want to see if it'll crank. Battery's not doing very well. Not seeing the oil light go out yet. So I'll just put a booster on here and see what happens. I really want to see this oil light go out. There we go. Oil light's gone out. So we've got everything primed up. We've got oil pressure. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, just check that I've got spark. Some spark here. I'm not seeing any spark. Well, I've tried a couple of different plugs uh, grounded out to uh, the bolt here, but I'm not getting any visible spark. And double checked because I got a I, I put a jumper on the uh, side stand switch. So whether that's plugged in or not plugged in, um, I'm not, still not getting any spark there. So yeah, I'm a, a little bit puzzled. 
as to what is going on, so I'm going to have to start going through everything, I guess. Um, something simple, I guess, potentially. I wonder if there's a, uh, a ground wire that I'm missing somewhere, but I'm pretty sure I got everything hooked up. I'll have to double check. Okay, I finally have spark. Um, so it was one of two things I was using. I pulled this boot off here and I just stuck a spare spark plug in um, and a couple of old spark plugs I had. Um, and then uh, wasn't getting spark. Found a connector down in here that didn't seem to be uh, kind of fully seated properly. I'm not even sure what it was. I haven't looked it up yet, but I don't think it had anything to do with it, but you never know. Anyway, this one right here, the blue wire. Um, so that's been sorted out. And then I decided to throw a brand new spark plug on that boot just to uh, remove any doubts that it could have been one of the old plugs that I stuffed on there that was the problem. And then when I tried it again, I had spark. So. Next thing will be to uh, give it some fuel and uh, see if we can bring it to life. So I was fortunate enough to find some of the uh, the rubber trim pieces I need off uh, off of eBay for the GSXR. So these are the kind of the bungs or the plugs that go here because I'm not putting the uh, the grab bar on this bike. And then uh, these are the grommets for the. Uh, the turn signals that go into the uh, the upper fairing. So managed to get uh, a bunch of those. So I think that's that should be it. I think for the trim pieces. All right, there we go. Got the uh, the rubber plugs in there. So these are those are ready to go. And uh, I got to get back to putting some fuel in this and see if it'll fire up. All right, so we're gonna get ready uh, to try and fire the bike. So first things first, get the uh, fuel. All right, so fingers crossed, this girl fires up here. Power on, choke. sopping in oil originally so it's uh it's gonna take a little while to burn that off I guess.
debris flowing out of the tailpipe there because there was so much carbon in there. I tried to get most of it out, but... Well, we'll wait for the smoke to clear. So yeah, like I was saying, I don't know if you could hear me above the, uh, the racket there, but when I, this original, original to the, not original OEM, but the, this is the silence of it came on the bike. And when I originally took it off, it was packed. I don't know if you recalled how, how carpened up and how oiled up the cylinder head was on the exhaust side of the bike when I took it out uh, of the, the 750. But there were huge clumps, like I would say a good, you know, inch to two inches in diameter clumps of black carbon and oil that were falling out of that uh, tailpipe. And uh, so I ran some stuff through it and I tried to clear it out, but it was very badly oil soaked. Um, and this, there was still some loose stuff in there. And you could tell when I, when I cracked the throttle, there was bits of debris uh, shooting out of the back, so I was not surprised at all uh, by by that, not in the least. Um, and the majority, of the, well, all of the oil that uh, that was burning off there has kind of filled the shop here with some uh, some smoke. But yeah, it'll uh, it'll clean itself out. It'll be uh, it'll probably be a little bit smoky until it uh, burns itself clean, but. I know the engine's fine because the uh, I mean it wasn't it wasn't blowing smoke when it was in the in the bandit either so that was that's uh, just the crap that's in the the tailpipe I guess and running on all cylinders the way that it's supposed to uh, probably running a little lean I would say but uh, that's to be expected with those pods on there and that exhaust system I think uh, I will have to definitely investigate putting in a, a, a jet kit in there for sure. So the only other thing uh, that I noticed is that my uh, my tack isn't working so I'll have to investigate what's going on with that. Of course I don't know if it's even uh, if there could be the actual gauge itself because I've never had uh, this bike uh, running until now with with this gauge on it. Uh, the tack was working okay I think in the uh, in the bandit as far as I remember. So more than likely, uh, I have to double check which of the wires that I repinned to that. For sure, I repin the oil uh, light. Um, if for any reason I, I repinned for the the tack and I got that wrong, then that could be part of the issue. But I don't think that's that's what it was. But uh, I'll have to go back and check my notes. But that's fine. That's kind of small potatoes stuff. So yeah, so, yeah, that's good news. Excited, uh, happy that it ran. Happy that it all, four, all four cylinders were alive and well. So you can see how much crap came out of the tailpipe of this bike. This floor was clean before I fired it up. And this is, this is all the stuff that was shooting out of the tailpipe all over the place. So yeah, you can see actually everything is just kind of, I mean, yes, there's a speckled floor here, but if you, that's, that's all stuff that came out of the tail. I got as much out as I could. I could probably, I should probably have maybe got a piece of uh, steel cable and just frayed the ends and run it in the, in the drill uh, in and out of the inside of the pipe. Um, but there's, yeah, there was still quite a bit of shite in there. And I don't know if you could see when the pipe started to get hot, some of that stuff was actually kind of igniting and shooting out of the back. These uh, like look like sparks coming out of the back. So uh, all of that, I was absolutely expecting that to happen just because I knew the state of the inside of this, uh, of this silencer and mid pipe. It was uh, an absolute bloody mess. So uh, yeah, that's not a surprise to me. Um, that it was oily coming out uh, and I, because it was you know debris shooting out of the back so that's all of that is i'm not uh, i'm not concerned about it i know exactly what's going on with that so but it's loud holy smokes is that loud <laughs>
she's definitely running uh, a little lean. Um, if I give it just a slight amount of uh, choke, uh, it's it's smooth as glass and it's it doesn't pop or anything like that. Um, the choke full. I'm going to say a small amount of choke. I mean, barely, barely any. Uh, just a small m move of that choke. Uh, she she purrs like a kitten. Uh, knock the choke all the way off and it is it is gasping a little bit and and popping although all four cylinders are running and they're all hot they're all about the same temperature uh it does seem to be a little bit lean maybe i need to uh unscrew the pilots a little bit um the uh not the pilots the uh fuel screws um if i richen that up a little bit that might uh might do something for me, so I'll uh, I'll give that a try, and uh, we'll go from there. And of course, the carbs have not been synced at all yet. Um, at this point, I'm just thrilled that it's in the bike, it's running, all four cylinders are running. Um, the pipe has finally stopped smoking. I ran it for a little while, and as you saw in that last clip, um, no more clouds of smoke coming out of there. It started to obviously burn off that nasty residue that was in there. Um, yeah. It's it's coming along. What I'm what I'm hearing and feeling and seeing is that uh, I need either slightly larger pilots or a little bit of a turnout on the fuel screw um, because it seems to hesitate a, a little bit. It's not as smooth um, coming off idle into the main circuit. So, um, but if I give it a slightest amount of choke, and I, when I, as I said before, I don't mean like a whole chunk of choke. I just mean like like at the slightest little like that much so if i turn off where i am now that much that's that's all the choke and then it just smoothens right out everything is it's as smooth as glass uh there's no hesitation there's no you know gasping or popping or whatnot so it's definitely running a little lean and so i think the first thing i'll try is a maybe a quarter turn or half turn or something on on the fuel screws and uh, play with it from there for a little bit and uh, we'll see what happens but uh, yeah I think I'm going to be awful tempted now to put the body work back on it and uh, we're going to be I think we're hopefully going to get this thing wrapped up in this video even if I'm going to continue on playing around with a few things for a while I'd like to uh, wrap up the video series and I'll just come back and show you uh, later after I've got everything, all the small things buttoned up on it, because as I said before, I need a clamp for, for that hose. i got to sort out why the tack isn't working, because uh, I did double check, uh, and the, the, the wiring uh, pin for the tack is the same on here as it was on the bandit, so I didn't have to touch that. And uh, so yeah, I suspect that there's a problem with the tack itself. All right, so I've been over the wiring uh, changes that I made to the gauge cluster. And everything seems to be uh, as I would expect. I'm confident that I did not put anything in the wrong place. I only moved two wires. I moved the uh, the oil light wire and I moved the black and white grounding wire for the illumination, uh, which also is a ground for the tack. But, um, you know, the high beam light comes on, the illumination lights come on, so I'm comfortable that the positive the negative and the signal wires are all in the right place for the tack <clears throat> so the question is is the tack bad on the gsxr or am i not getting a pulse signal um through the wiring harness which i guess some way or another comes from the the coil so there's i guess there's a couple of things that i might try for that so one is i think my multimeter uh can pick up uh, if you use the hertz setting on the multimeter uh, i think it can pick up a, a signal that might tell me that uh you know is the is the gauge cluster receiving a signal or not uh so i might try that the other thing i can potentially do is remove the headlight bucket unplug this gauge cluster and then plug in the old bandit cluster and then just see if I get uh, a functional tack on that that might be the you know the true the true test so we'll uh, we'll give that a go I think the first thing I'm going to do though is do some uh, fuel screw changes on this I'm going to move them a quarter turn out I've got my uh, <clears throat> my carburetor screwdriver here for 
getting underneath there. This is a Motion Pro carb tool. This is a sink tool, I think, but uh, works just as well for getting at the fuel screws. And in some cases, uh, this, this screwdriver should be just fine for it as well. So uh, we'll play with that for a little bit. Before we start throwing bodywork back on, I would like to figure out whether or not this, this tack unit is no good or if it's a wiring issue, a uh, signal problem. Uh, that way I can either you know, buy a new gauge cluster. Um, there's not, there is no good proof to be working um, tacks out there. Well, actually there is. I found one on eBay. Um, and then there's for you know not too much more money you can get an entire gauge cluster so uh we'll see one way or the other uh we'll figure it out let's first first figure out whether or not the uh, gauges are bad or if i've got a, a signal wiring problem So I just basically unclipped the uh, GSXR um, clocks and I plugged in the Bandit clocks, which I've just kind of just set up here. And then we'll see if we have a functional tack here. And that'll tell me whether or not I've got a wiring issue or a signal issue or uh, whether or not my uh, tachometer gauge is bad. Uh, I think, like I'm not an expert on electrical stuff, I really am not. Uh, but what I've read is that uh, if you hook up your... Uh, volt, your amp meter, not your amp meter, your multimeter to the pulsar wire and to the negative, uh, you should get an, uh, and you put it to uh, AC volts, you should get a, an AC voltage reading. Um, and it doesn't really matter what that reading is as long as that it is increasing with the revs. And I was seeing it increasing with the revs. So, uh, but this will tell me for sure, because um, right now it's pointing to a bad gauge. Um, so let's see what happens here. There we go. Looks like my gauge might be bad. Okay, so what I did, um, because it was, seemed to be running a little bit lean on uh, idle and just coming off idle. I haven't taken the carbs off or anything. I haven't rejetted anything. Uh, all I did was I did a quarter turnout on the fuel screws and so far that has just kind of smoothened the 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 transition out it's a little bit uh smoother at idle it's not popping and uh coming from coming off idle onto throttle it's not stumbling like it was kind of raspy well, not raspy is not the word it was kind of stuttering that's a better way to put it um and that seems to have uh become a lot better. Uh, all four cylinders are running about the same temperature, which is great. And uh, I've got some um, feelers out. There's a gentleman on one of the forums who has uh, a Dale Walker jet kit that he might be willing to part with, a lightly used kit. So I might end up uh, with that to put on. <laughs>
All right, so tank is on. The upper fairing is looking okay. The mirror is on. Front fender. Front fender is a giant pain in the backside to put on with the wheel still in place, um, but I just couldn't be bothered uh, removing that wheel. So, and I still uh, I still have to weld up this little bracket that I made here for the lower fairing. So uh, I got to do that before I put the uh, the belly pin on. But uh, we'll move to the back, I guess. So it's coming together. Man, it looks good. The color scheme is just incredible. Gosh, that looks great. So nice. So nice. So I've got to wait for a little bit with putting the tail uh, pieces on the side panels because there's a couple of rubber grommets that uh, go in here. You can see them, uh, I guess these are the ones here. And the ones that came off uh, are honestly a little bit, uh, a little bit dry, a little bit crusty. So uh, I'll put them in some wintergreen oil and alcohol to soak, and that'll soften them right up. They're not cracked; they're just kind of harder than I'd like them to be. I just want to soften them up a little bit. So a few hours in the wintergreen and alcohol will uh, will bring those right back to as soft as new. <laughs> Starting to look really good. That's not bad at all. That'd uh, be nice if that solo cow set just a little lower. I gotta, and I have to say thanks again to Ralph Harrison for selling me uh, that rear fender and whatnot because quite honestly, this bike would not look like it does. It wouldn't look right if I, if I didn't have that and they're so hard to find. So thanks again, Ralph, I really do appreciate it. So while I think I am gonna be able to wrap this uh, restoration up in this video, I will say 
there's a couple of things that uh, I'm still going to come back to on the bike and, and putter with, uh, but we'll still call it done for the purposes of uh, videos. When I get back to a couple of things, I'll, I'll haul it back out and probably film that as well. But a um, couple of little things that I, I still uh, need to do. So obviously the clocks are going to get replaced because that, uh, that gauge is bad. So I'm going to uh, sort that out. There's... Um, also, the preload on that rear shock, I'm thinking, is a little a little high. I think I have it cranked all the way up, and it just looks to me like it's sitting a little too high in the back end. So I might uh, back that preload off a little, uh, level it off a bit more to my liking. There's uh, the jet kit that still will need to go in here. The clamp for that uh, rear brake hose where I've got the zip tie currently, that has to get done. I don't have that in hand. And uh, yeah, there's a couple of other a couple of other little things here and there that uh, I've noticed as I've gone through that uh, I've got on my list here, but uh, nothing, nothing major. It's all you know the the meat and potatoes of it is is there and looking good. And uh, yeah, darn, it looks good. I am so pleased with the color scheme. Uh, I'm glad I did the uh, the green and the skull bandit. As you may recall, I debated, I jumped back and forth between all the different colors, but this is, uh, this is great. So the other thing I did not mount on here uh, was the uh, reflectors. They kind of, these big ugly red reflectors that go in the back and then there's orange ones that go in the front. And normally I would put those on because I'm a you know, stickler for kind of originality, but in this case, um, you know, the bike is not uh, original. It's you know, heavily modified, and I think uh, it just completely spoils the look of the decals when you stick a big, huge orange reflector in there. Same with the with the back. So I'm going to leave them off. I have them, uh, I have them in a bag here. So uh, if I decide, basically that's what they look like. I've got I've got a full set of them in here, the orange ones and the reds. But yeah, there's just it just doesn't look good. I think so. Uh, I'm just going to leave them off for now. I uh, may decide later to put them on, but uh, for now, they're staying off. Yeah, I couldn't resist at least putting on the uh, the right side lower fairing. Uh, and holy smokes, this thing looks absolutely incredible. I could not be happier. Damn, that looks good. The, the strange thing is, when this thing was yellow, it looked really small. It looked like a small bike. Uh, and the color, it, and it looks friggin' huge now. It's strange how that works, eh? Depending on what colors you you paint something, kind of gives you a, 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 maybe a different visible perspective on it. But uh, yeah, holy smokes, it looks good. This other panel can go on the other side, and the V brace can go in the middle. So I just had to get the other side on, and uh, yeah, just the last two pieces to put in there. And uh, yeah, I just can't stop looking at it. Like I've, I've just been sitting here in the shop, staring, admiring. The colors are just fantastic. Man, that looks good. Golly. So if I have to critique anything on the bike, if there's something, uh, a couple of things that I'm, I'm not 100% happy with, but you know, it is what it is, live and learn. Um, I think my, my paint lines on the dark green were off ever so slightly. Like the, the, these stripes are perfectly aligned um, with the curvature of the cowl and with the way the holes are here. But this green paint, this is, these, are, these two are decals. This is paint and it could have been down a, a little bit further to have the same gap as the uh, as the stripes the stripes were applied fine it was the paint line that was off uh, a little bit so that would have been uh, better if i'd have been down just uh, maybe an eighth of an inch more on the paint um and then the other thing is this if i could get the solo cowl to sit down a little bit better like it sits a little proud at the top i don't know why it's an aftermarket cowl and i haven't figured out why that's happening yet but if I can get that to sit down, that would align these stripes uh, a little bit better. But, and then I'm still not, you know, 100% happy with this bum pad here. I mean, it looks it looks okay, 
from this side, but I'm not super pleased with the uh, with the corners puckered like that. So I might still uh, end up taking that back and getting that sorted out. But you know, there's always going to be one or two things, and you know, you can live and learn. Some of it you can do over again. Other things you just live and learn, and you move on and try to do it better next time. But yeah, not too bad. I think the only other modification I might consider making um, if I was to do this again or maybe even in the future, um, because I have pods on here now, um, there's a kind of a, a big empty space up inside underneath the tank here. And uh, one of the pieces of I, advice or an idea that was given to me was uh, to mount on the top of the frame here a, a square piece of aluminum plate because well, that's where the uh, air box used to come up. So there's a whole pile of real estate in here where I could actually move the uh, CDI box and the fuse box uh, over from underneath the seat off the fender over to this side. And then by, and by doing so, you can also uh, make the, uh, the frame a little more rigid given that it has the, the B1200 in it. So that's kind of something else for consideration that might happen uh, further down the line. But for now, uh, it's good. All right, so we're just uh, welding up the little mounting thing here. I'm not a professional welder, clearly, but... So clearly I'm not a uh, accomplished welder, because I've only just started, but... Uh, should be good enough. I smacked that stuff with the uh, with the hammer. Nothing came off, so that should do the trick for now. All it needs to do is hold that nut on there. I only put the uh, the bolt in there just to hold the nut in place, and then uh, a different there's going to be a different bolt or screw that's going to be used. Put a etching primer. Panels are always a, a bit of a wrestling match, but at the end of the day, you just take your time and it all comes together in the end. All right, so we got all those. Uh, support tabs or the joining tabs or whatever you want to call those things brackets uh, mounted in there the good news is uh, this replacement header uh, is a much much better fit in this bike than the header the Vanson Hines header that was on this bike that was all rotted out and the other thing I also noticed I was looking back at pictures uh, and you may notice uh, as I do the walk around and the comparison back to the original bike at the end of this video. This mid pipe and, and silencer are actually further this way. They're kind of further back. The other one kind of, it's a good four to six inches uh, longer, that header. And so it kind of moves the pipe up and back further, which I think, I think looks really good. Alright guys and gals, it's done. I'm going to call this one finished for the purposes of this video series. Um, if I uh, do a couple of other things on it here and there, I'll be sure to do some updates. Uh, as is the case with uh, a lot of my restorations, this one is not planned for the road yet. So as such, I'm not even putting fuel in the tank. Um, I am going to drain those carbs shortly because it's just going to get uh, garage cleaned for a little while 
and then uh, maybe once I get a jet kit and a few other things I might take it out for for a ride but uh, yeah real really pleased really pleased with how this has come out certainly a, a great looking color scheme for sure let's take a quick look back on how this thing looked when I first got it This is going to conclude this video series on the uh, 86 GSX-R750 Skull Bandit, otherwise known as the Junkyard Slabby. So I just want to say thanks again to everybody for uh, tuning in, for subscribing, for commenting, uh, for the advice, and uh, to people who have uh, contacted me and allowed me to buy parts for this bike uh, along the way. Thanks very much. It is uh, very much appreciated. Um, some of these projects couldn't happen without people who are willing to help out and uh, you know some as you know some of the parts for these bikes are getting increasingly hard to find so uh, I appreciate it hope you enjoyed the series uh, I've certainly enjoyed doing it this has been one of my favorite builds and uh, yeah I'm kind of glad that it's done but a little bit uh, sad as well that it's uh, this one's finished but there is a, still a few things to uh, to do and once they arrive uh, at some point over the next uh, month or two or three or whatever, when I get some time, I'll, uh, we'll have another couple of clips with a few updates on this. But uh, yeah, that's a wrap. So uh, thanks very much for watching. Please like, share and subscribe if you haven't already done so. 
that really does help my channel grow. And uh, yeah, we're going to move on to the next project, which is the, uh, the KTM uh, RC8 race bike. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.